So this is a demo, it's going to be a demo of a, of a kinematics engine I built, as, as Jonathan mentioned, on top of Hoops Communicator. It's not part of a product, it has no plans to make it part of a product, but it will end up uh, as part of our lab, one of our lab's projects. It evolved out of what Lionel mentioned, you know, we are now supporting, have limited support for mates and assembly constraints. And so, you know, visualizing that data is, is something that is really interesting. And with, we're going to do that first officially and visualize, but here's like a, you know, it's basically an idea of how this kinematics, and kinematics data or this mates data that uh, can, can then be represented. Again, this is not, no, it's not the official product. It's just a big, big dis disclaimer. And it's not using the data currently coming out of exchange. It's 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 defining that uh, that more directly. So let's start as an example here with a very simple model, the micro engine, which is part of our like demo demo models here. It's you know as the name implies, it's an actually an engine with some piston inside, and it moves in a certain way. And you know the, the one of the things that uh, that we struggled with when we built our animation engine actually was how to animate this model realistically. So it's not really that simple. It doesn't really have a structure that lends itself to this animation. So that's what this kinematic engine is for. So now with this new uh, animatics, this kinematics capability, you can just uh, essentially define joint relationships between objects that are independent from the actual model structure. So I'm starting here with like a simple, I'm starting with this uh, element here, which is a crankshaft. I'm just adding that now to the model. And, you know, based on that, it has like essentially an axis around it, around the way it rotates. Okay, let me just put, move this here a little bit out of the way. Uh, and then we have a child joint here that would be this one here, the actual push rod that pushes uh, that pushes down and then that pushes on the piston. Again, this is a model, this is uh, an entity we, we can define, uh, but actually consists of three parts that are all that are not directly defined here. So the, the push rod itself, and then it's two bearings. And of course it also has, uh, has an axis of rotation here. So we can just add this to the model now. And now, but now, as you can see, you know, when you move, when you rotate, oops, let me do this again. When you're rotating this, it, obviously we, what we want, really want to do, we want to, we want it to rotate it at push down on that push rod and then move the engine that way, which is currently not the way it works. So in order to accomplish this, we uh, obviously we have to define the actual piston here. We do that as well. Uh, with another element to it. We define its axis and we add this, uh, actually, let me read this here. We, we add this uh, as well, and we have to. And this obviously, it's not. It's not a rotational component. It's actually a, a revolute joint. It's actually prismatic. Means that it moves up and down along an axis. So we can just change that here, and now you can see when you uh, it moves up and down this axis. But of course, it's not connected to anything else. In order to accomplish that, all we need to do now is is, is change this uh, standard revolute joint and turn it into like a like what we call this piston controller here. Uh, which essentially takes uh, the prismatic joint, the, the, the piston itself. You can update that here. We also need to do a slight adjustment. And now, when you uh, when you rotate the, the the crank, it automatically uh, moves everything else based on this like mathematical definition that that is defined in this in this piston controller. And so, it's an easy way to basically create these relationships again. Now we do this manually, but you, in, in the future that, that data might come directly from exchange, or at least we would we would be able to more easily create it using the data, the mates and, 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 and kinematics information coming from the actual cut model. Now, and of course, you can take this, you can take this data now and you can uh, it create essentially adjacent documents that you can then apply to the model. So, and you know, the idea is that this can then be used now in many contexts, you know, digital to twin, you can have IoT data that drives this animation. So I give you an example here. Let's start off with an empty model and instead of just one uh, PIS micro engine, we load uh, many of them, like, you know, like a whole 10 by 10 models. And, with, uh, and then all we need to do is uh, again define, load this previously defined uh, kinematics definition for this model. And then essentially with, by just uh, applying that to all those piston and simultaneously uh, with a single, with, with a few lines of code, we can basically animate all those those micro engines all based on essentially this kinematics information uh, again you know if you can imagine this this would be driven by iot data this would come from other from other information so i think in that context it's between iot it's a really interesting uh, interesting use case so this was a very simple model let's do another uh, fairly simple example which is this like uh, engine uh, piston raw engine hoist, you know, which has like, again, like a very specific, it's a kinematics definition. So we can just bring this in here, 
apply it to the model. And then uh, you can see that basically has two different things and it, it has this kind of, you call it prismatic triangle, which essentially def defines how the how this uh, this element should move in relation to the other parts. And then there's also like a gravity component here, like you see, like as the, as, as, as the, this thing uh, rotates, it, it makes sure that the, the actual little hook here is always kind of pointing downwards towards, towards the gravity. And this, there's no physics here. There's no physics engine behind it. It's really all driven by these mathematical, constraints. Uh, another quick example, uh, it's a little more complex digital twin would be like, you know, the, the, the MakerBot, which is, a, I think, fairly, fairly popular model that's used. Again, we have like a created a, a kinematics definition for that one. And, and again, when now you, uh, you can basically imagine that is driven by IoT data. You see here, as you move around, it also supports these, these things. Actually, that was part of a hackathon project that we implemented this, uh, these, these belt belts that are usually that are in a lot of these like mechanical models that, that drive the movement of the individual pieces and you see like as as I move something around that actually updates the belt and so again this could be driven manually or it could be driven by the actual IoT data coming coming from like a real to real 3D printer. Another uh, somewhat more uh, involved example here is again it's another another machine with a lot of different different components loads of kinematics data here. And that has some predefined animation in here. That's not really animation. That's basically just like driving these individual joints. So as you press play here, you know, it moves all these different parts uh, individually, or you can do this. You can, you can obviously have, a, have control of all these, these and these components in an in individual capacity. Uh, two more quick examples. And I'm going to go through this quickly. I think we're already a little late on time. Here's another like uh, more typical mechanical model. Uh, an engine, twelve-cylinder engine. Again, it's one of the, our uh, one of our demo demo models. Load this in. Apply the animation definition. This contains over forty different like components, really, that drives this animation. The individual, uh, these individual pis uh, pistons and the and the other parts. And it's all essentially driven by this one one thing in, 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 the, in the middle there, this crank as it moves this around, you know, it drives all this our animation. Again, not based on physics, but, but, but not, also not pre-canned animation, really based on the kinematics restraints that are uh, constraints that are found in this model. As it moves this around, you know, it moves those, those things individually and a, a lot of different pieces. Another typical use case for kinematics in general, obviously, is robotics. Here's a here's an example of uh, robotics and from this is one of those grab pad models. And again, you see here, uh, put this on, and uh, you see it's a simple. It, obviously, the arm itself moves, but then these secondary uh, relationships that are here, these secondary constraints are also considered. It doesn't really. It's not. I mean, this whole engine is not complete yet. It doesn't really support limits yet, so it can you can move it up beyond it, the way it actually can go. But it does. It does show you can create. You can recreate these fairly complex kinematic structures that that are found in robotics models. And finally, there is another another robot here. This one, there's also limited inverse kinematic support. So what I've showed so far is like these these forward kinematics relationships, but there's also uh, inverse kinematics in here. So showing this, this model here, and now instead of animate and uh, moving these individual joints, I'm just creating like a target essentially for this animation, and then as I move the the robot as uh, the, the target around the robot follows based on just calcul calculating the correct positioning for the individual parts.